Welcome to Ditch Auto, my name's Jared, and today we're gonna take a look at shooting manual photography with the DJI Phantom 4. Now this is the Phantom 4 Pro, but it works the same with pretty much any of the DJI drones, uh, but more specifically, we're looking at uh, the DJI Go app and how to control your drone to shoot manual photography. Now, why would you wanna shoot manual photography? Well, when you leave your camera in automatic mode and you're shooting photos in automatic mode, your camera is doing some sort of evaluation of the scene and it's exposing the scene however it thinks that it should. And that might not necessarily be the way that you want it exposed. When your drone's up in the sky and it's got a big wide image that it's looking at, it's looking at all of the, dif the different things in that scene and it's deciding what am I gonna expose? How am I gonna do this? And if something seems overexposed, there's really nothing you can do. You can tap around on the screen, you can try and make uh, exposure changes, um, but the best way to do it is actually just to take total control of the camera and give it the settings that you want it. So we're looking at my screen here on my phone and I chose my phone because this has a higher resolution so I can show you guys this in a higher resolution. I usually fly with a tablet. So uh, the first thing that you need to do is actually just put your camera in automatic mode and right underneath the shutter button, there's this icon and yours is probably set on auto. And so the little button down here says a P, P and it has a couple of little sliders. You tap on that and you're actually gonna need to go into manual. Now, regardless of what mode you're in here, whether you're in a camera mode um, or photo mode or whatever, um, you know, you're, you're gonna want to click on manual and be in manual. So you see some options here. We have our ISO, our aperture, and our shutter speed. Now, probably one of the best investments that you can make for your drone is ND filters. ND filters actually go on to the front here. You unscrew the, the lens off of your camera and you screw on another lens that has a piece of glass that's darker. And what that does is it limits the amount of light that comes in. This is more important with shooting video than it is with shooting photos. With shooting photos, I can slide my shutter speed up and you can notice that as I go up to a thousand, my scene gets darker. And as I go down in my shutter speed, my scene gets brighter. Now the problem with going down too low in your shutter speed, uh, like 50, you're gonna have a lot of blur. Your image is not gonna be very sharp. Uh, the, shutter, this, the shutter speed basically says how long is the sensor gonna be exposed to light. And uh, you know when you're, when you're at a smaller number, it's exposed to light for a longer period of time. That's why the image gets brighter. And when that happens, uh, the shutter is opened and more movement can happen in between the time that the shutter is opened and it's closed. So when you're flying around, you're probably gonna wanna try and be at around one two hundredth, maybe even higher depending on how fast you're moving. Now if you fly and stop and your, your Phantom is pretty much stationary in the sky and you go to take a photo, you could probably get down to around one one twentieth, maybe even one one hundredth and still have a pretty sharp image. You've got the stabilization that the drone has itself, and a pretty good camera to boot, so those things are, are definitely going for you. But I try to stay around one 160th of a second, and by staying at 160th of a second, uh, I'm, I'm making sure that I'm getting pretty sharp photos. Now if I'm flying around, if I'm actually moving and I'm wanting to freeze action, like maybe I'm chasing someone who's, who's running and I'm trying to get a shot of them running or something like that, you're gonna need to increase your shutter speed, maybe up to 1 3 20th or you know, 320 here. Uh, and, and your shutter speed, the higher you go, the better it's gonna do a job at uh, freezing the action that's going on below you. Now, like I said, you notice the higher that we go with that shutter speed, the darker that it gets. And so we have to compensate for that somehow. You know, if it's a nice bright day, you're not gonna have a problem. You can set your aperture nice and wide. You can sh set your shutter speed nice and fast and you're gonna grab a nice sharp photo. It's not gonna be a problem at all. Uh, but if it's a little bit darker out, you're gonna need to keep that shutter speed a little bit slower and then compensate somehow. So let's talk about aperture. The aperture is the amount of light that is coming through the lens and hitting the sensor. So there is an iris on the lens and as you adjust the aperture, that iris opens up 
Uh, and the smaller the number, the wider the aperture. And this drone has a 2.8 aperture. And then if I slide this number over, you see as I go up to 11, the scene gets much darker. And uh, so 11 obviously would be uh, something that I would use to help compensate on a bright day. If I didn't wanna go super high on my shutter speed, I could also slide the aperture over closer to 11 to darken up my scene a little bit and not have everything overexposed. Now, aperture, when you're at that wider aperture, that f2, that 2.8, uh, which is f2.8 is, is how it's uh, usually mentioned, um, that f2.8 is going to uh, have a shorter distance of a focal range. So if you've ever seen a photo or taken a photo where uh, that photo, the person or the subject is in focus, and it seems like just barely behind them, everything is out of focus, that's a wider aperture. It's a shallower depth of field. And this camera has that ability too, to shoot with a shallower depth of field. So if you're closer to somebody and you're, you're trying to get them in the shot and then have the background be a little blurrier, you can shoot at more of an f2.8 at that 2.8 aperture. Or if it doesn't matter, uh, you want everything to be in focus, the person, the subject, the point of interest, and the background scene, you might want to tighten that aperture up a bit and go closer up to f11 because that's gonna give you a deeper depth of field. And so you could see with the shutter, the shutter speed we're dealing with how, um, you know, whether we wanna freeze action or not and or have a little bit of blur. You know, when you're shooting video, it's good to have a little bit of blur. When you're shooting photos, you want them to be nice and sharp. So you wanna have a nice balance of your shutter speed to where everything's nice and sharp, uh, but you wanna also have an aperture set somewhere where, um, with that aperture, you have your depth of field looking the way that you want it to. So lots of things to think about so far here. Now the last one is the ISO, and the ISO is how sensitive your sensor is to the light that's coming in. So once the light gets past the iris, the aperture controls, and then gets to the sensor, where uh, past the shutter, you're actually have the sensor and the sensor sensitivity, and that's what ISO adjusts. Now this ISO will go quite high. It'll go all the way up to 12,800, but that will produce the grainiest, noisiest, most unusable photo that you've ever seen in your life. So going up to 12,800 is not gonna be recommended. In my tests with this drone, I try not to go above ISO 800. If you start to go above that, your image starts to get a little noisy. Now you can stretch it in photo mode and go up to 1600. You know, if, if you're flying a little bit closer to nighttime and you need that boost and you, you wanna make sure your image is sharp so you're not going too low on your shutter speed and you, your aperture is already as wide as it can be at 2.8, you need to compensate with that ISO there a little bit. And I wouldn't go any higher with photos, ISO 1600. And if you're shooting video, I most definitely wouldn't go any higher than 800 on that ISO because it adds noise to the image and, it, and it's a grainy image is what ends up being produced. And in photos, you can kind of get rid of the grain. Um, you can take your photo into Adobe Lightroom or Photoshop and you can get rid of some of that grain and smooth the photo out a little bit. But with video, it's much harder to pull that grain out of a video. So you wanna do whatever it is that you can to avoid having to increase the ISO too much when you are uh, shooting video and photos too. So anyways, so that's gonna uh, kind of give you a gist of the idea. We have those three things there. Now at the very bottom, you'll see a little meter that either goes negative, zero, or positive, uh, and that is your exposure meter. That lets you know how well your scene is exposed because sometimes, especially if you're on a small phone like this, it's hard to really see how the image is looking. I mean, you can see what the camera sees, but it's really hard to tell if you are exposed within the right area. And so that meter tells you when you are at zero dead in the center, that means your exposure is even. There, uh, you know, there shouldn't be any areas in your photo that are too dark or too bright. So that kind of tells you a ballpark of where you're at. Now there might be situations where you want to underexpose a little bit. So you can see here as I slide the ISO back down, you can see now I'm at negative 2.0. 
that is an underexposed image. And there might be a situation where it would read that way because maybe there's a, a very small portion of your image that is exposed properly and it looks good, but the rest of your image is dark and you want it that way, this exposure meter can kind of give you misreading. And it really comes down to the fact that you have a little tiny camera way up in the air, and so your readings are gonna be kind of iffy with this. If you're flying outside on a nice, beautiful day, you know, set your exposure right at zero, it's gonna be great. You might even underexpose just a little bit so that you still get those deep blues in the sky. And then of course you can use a, a, you know, an app to edit your photo and bring back a little bit of exposure in those other areas. So it, it takes playing with it, it takes practicing. And you know, when you're shooting with this, especially when you're shooting photos, I highly recommend that you shoot in RAW, in camera RAW. Now the camera here, if you tap on settings, or if you tap on the camera settings, you have an image format that you can choose. You can choose RAW, JPEG, or JPEG plus RAW. Now the RAW file is a much more, uh, a much bigger image, but it gives you a lot more room to play with. The, uh, the image is not compressed. It is the RAW file out of the camera, right into, uh, onto the card. It's not actually sending it to your phone. It's right on the SD card. And you take that SD card and put it in your computer and you take that RAW file and import it into Adobe Lightroom or Adobe Photoshop or something like that and you have much more depth in that image that you're able to work with. There's more room to bring back the dark areas that got a little too dark. There's more room to knock down the highlights because those bright areas got a little too bright. When you compress your image to a JPEG and you allow the camera to do that, you're clipping the ends off of that photo as far as the extra data that's there so that you can push and pull in the direction that you need to. Now, we'll do some videos on editing some photos off of the drone. I, you know, my goal here is to get you out of automatic mode. Obviously, the drone itself does a great job of flying around and, and, and keeping you in control so that you can spend more time focusing on the camera. And that's what this is all about. It's about focusing on the camera, getting into manual control so that you can set up the shot the way that you want it to look and not rely on it to automatically do it. It does a decent job, but it definitely doesn't do a job good enough to make your photos or videos stand apart from everybody else's. So that's gonna do it for this video. I know it was a quick overview. I have more stuff coming soon for those of you that fly drones and want to learn more about ditching auto and getting into manual. I'm super excited to kind of go through this with you guys. So make sure to subscribe to our channel here on YouTube and definitely join our Facebook group, which is linked below our Ditch Auto Facebook group where we talk about manual photography. And now we're starting to talk about manual drone photography as well. So thank you so much for checking out our channel. Click that thumbs up to let me know you like this video and we hope to see you back here soon on Ditch Auto. Thanks.